Gracias for coming hack to fuego once more, my fans of all things freakish and frightening. This is in Fuego Tainment, where yours truly, Jaime and Fuego, covers the hottest entertainment with an edge. And throughout the entire month of October, I've been going through the entire Tales from the Crypt series, amigos. That's right. It is one of my absolute favorites. I love anthology horror. Tales of Halloween was an amazing entry this past month into the Anthology Horror Collective, and I just felt at the beginning of the month, why not go through every Tales from the Crypt episode? There's 93 of them in total. There's 31 days in the month of Halloween in October. So this is the 26th installment. Can you see that I'm kind of exhausted? Man, six seasons of Tales from the Crypt I am nearly finished with, with just one more. And in fact, the final one is the one that I am the least familiarized with. However, this is a three-episode installment of The Bueno, The Malo, and The Feo, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, where I was very familiar with every episode. I had seen all three of these and very vividly remembered them from my childhood and remembered, honestly, loving all three of them. You know, so this was one of the toughest selection processes that I have ever had for those three distinctions in this entire run of crypt coverage, my friends. And so, yeah, let's just jump right into the episode that I was so torn if it was going to be the Feo because it's ugly and gruesome and awesome and encompasses everything that I love about Tales from the Crypt. But I thought at the end of the day that it was probably the best out of these three. And it's called Doctor of Horror. Yeah, that's right. A generic title? Yeah, yeah, probably. I think it's one of the second or third just in this season alone with the word horror in the title. But man, this one is damn good. So first off, you get Larry Wilson finally getting to not just write, but direct, man. And Larry Wilson was behind The Addams Family, the amazing film that had Raul Julia, rest in peace. Yeah, and also Angelica Houston and Christopher Lloyd and Christina Ricci. Man, what a great film. So he was behind the uh, production of that in the writing, I believe, and then also with Beetlejuice, he had a hand in the writing there, and I think in the production to some capacity. So, seriously, he had written some great Tales from the Crypt episodes already. Eyes Will Kill ya, the one with Tim Roth, is still possibly one of my favorites of the entire series, especially a favorite that does not deal with supernatural horror. He also did Food for Thought and On a Dead Man's Chest, which eh, weren't quite as good, but seriously, this time he finally gets to write and direct it, and this is in my tops as far as Tales from the Crypt episodes go. It was one that I loved as a kid, scared me, crazy, the concept alone. So it's one of the most star-studded casts too. You've got Hank Azaria, who everybody knows, I mean, he was like the dog walker on Mad About You, and he was in Mystery Men, and he was in that really scary, horrible, I mean, we're talking Feo Godzilla film. No, not the most recent one that uh, Garth Edwards did. No, the one that the Independence Day guys did that had like, uh, Oh goodness, uh, it's Matthew Broderick in it, I think, but oh goodness, that one was Feo scary, like scary ugly, man. But he's made all of his money and is most notably, at least, you know, revered in all of Hollywood for the fact that he voices like dozens of people on The Simpsons and has done it for, goodness, like nearly 20, no, over 20 years now. What am I saying, man? Simpsons has been around since like 89. So, but he's actually in front of the camera as opposed to just doing voice work like he does there. And his uh, partner in crime, so to speak, in this episode is the multi-platinum country superstar, Mr. Travis Tritt, man. Yeah, that's right. The guy who's won Grammy Awards and has had Billboard number one country singles and all kinds of stuff. He's not really as big as he used to be now, but in those early 90s days of like the Clint Blacks and the Garth Brookses and all those dudes, man, Travis Tritt was the tits, I guess. So, so yeah, these two guys are basically security guards and they're working for Ben Stein of all people, which is great, you know, from Wonder Years and from Ferris Bueller. And also win Ben Stein's money with Mr. Jimmy Kimmel long before he ever made it big with the man show and eventually getting his own talk show, you know. But so these guys, they encounter this doctor who is trying to steal corpses because he's trying to find the soul gland. That's right. He believes that there is, in fact, a soul gland in every human body and it kind of like turns off or departs or something anytime somebody dies. And so. That's what uh, he employs these two bumbling kind of idiots to assist him in the stealing of corpses so that he can try to um, extract this particular bit from the human body and it's kind of goofy at times, but this is the kind of goofy that I actually tolerate because it's still like gore, it's gory goofy and it's not just super slapsticky silliness the whole time. 
Like, it balances the tone perfectly, which is where the Malo Tales from the Crypt episodes that try to be funny totally fall short, and whereas this one just totally knocks it out of the park, man. This is definitely, it holds up well. The acting is good. It's one of the best Tales from the Crypt set was ever made, and really a shining soulful light in the sixth season where there wasn't really as much of it. So yeah, it was a vault of horror story and a great one at that. So yeah, here's to the awesomeness that is Doctor of Horror. So let's get into the Malo episode now. Yeah, that's right, the bad one. And this one is actually not that bad, man. It's actually pretty enjoyable once the twist finally comes. But at least for my money, until the twist came, it's a bad episode and it's not very interesting. But once the gears start turning in your head and you figure it out, then it's a cool concept and you will actually see that one of my favorite films, well, I can't even say what genre of film it is because that would be giving too much away. Spoiler territory. But this one is called Comes the Dawn, and you basically got two awesome actors who have done so much genre work, it's insane. Firstly, you got Bruce Payne, who most people probably remember as like the bad guy uh, on that plane with Wesley Snipes in Passenger 57. He was also in that really awful, scary, feo, malo the Highlander Endgame, the one where they tried to bridge the TV series and the uh, and the movies together, and you had both McClouds in there, you had both Connor and Duncan, and he was a bad guy in that, but he also did so much genre work from Warlock 3 to uh, the Necronomicon movie, the Howling 6, I mean, holy hell, man, the guy was already in like, thir like 12 or 13 films just this year in 2015, so really crazy, and so his partner in crime, once again, I'm gonna use that silly trope, is actually Michael Ironside. And Michael Ironside, see you at the party, Richter! I mean, for goodness sake, total recall. He was most recently and awesomely in Turbo Kid as the bad guy, which was kind of a, a little bit of horror, a little bit of sci-fi, a little bit of just goofy comedy action. Amazing film. If you guys have not seen Turbo Kid, get on my Infuegotainment page and watch my review of it. It was one of it, it was honestly some of the best fun that I had in all of 2015 at the box office. It was incredible. And so these two dudes are in Alaska and they're both like former military and they're actually trying to do like some poaching. They're trying to get some bears or you know something like that. And uh, you know, they employ this this local who was also a former military, this this girl. And they just go on the trail trying to, you know, trying to get some nasty poaching done. And things are not what they seem. There's going to be a twist. Some crazy stuff is going to go down. And as I mentioned, the film, once the twist finally comes, and I want to say it's like the last five or seven minutes of it, then it's like, damn, cool concept. Love the concept. And once you guys see the twist, that, uh, that turn of uh, events, then you'll immediately realize that, Yes, this concept was stolen. Well, maybe not directly stolen, but it was actually employed in a feature film that's actually one of my favorites in a particular uh, subgenre of like thriller, horror. It's fantastic, totally awesome. This one was from The Haunt of Fear, and it also brings back Mr. Scott Nimmerfro. Yeah, that's right, who, as I was saying a couple episodes ago, was the go to guy by uh, A.L. Katz and Mr. Uh, Gilbert Adler at this point in the uh, final days of the Tales from the Crypt show. It only had one more season after this ahead of it, but you've also got Mr. Uh, John Herzfeld directing, and he's not really notable for too much with the exception of the fact that he did this killer movie called Two Days in the Valley back in the 90s that I always remember because one, very well written, violent, strange, it was kind of one of those Pulp Fiction copycats in a lot of ways, but Charlize Theron, Holy smokes, man. That is most definitely not feo. That is as bueno bonita, I should say, buena bonita as you can get because she's got some really hot scenes in it. So in any event, track down two days in the valley and definitely, you know, this may be the model of the bunch today, but that's just because it's, it's just the least bueno of all of them today. So yeah, I honestly really recommend Comes the Dawn as well. It's a great episode and uh, nowhere near as bad as some of the real serious Malos. So let's get into the Feo now, shall we? The final episode today, and this is one that it could have really gone either way, just like with this one, you know? Whereas Comes the Dawn was definitely either gonna be a Feo or a Malo, this one almost became the Bueno because I like it so much and it's got such a cool twist. and. Well acted, well directed actually. I have to mention the direction first and foremost. And that's because this episode called Surprise Party is the final directorial effort by Mr. Elliot Silverstein. And we've talked about him before on this show because man, he did original episodes of The Twilight Zone in the 60s. The guy's like almost 90 at this point. I think he might even still be teaching at like USC in the film school or something, but he did one of my favorite Tales from the Crypt episodes, which is called The Reluctant Vampire. 
I'd had, yes, you guessed it, Dude from Clockwork Orange, Mr. Malcolm McDowell. Great episode. His other two efforts, the well-cooked hams and uh, Curiosity Killed. Yeah, neither of which of those were quite as good. I mean, not not super, super Malo episodes. But yeah, Reluctant Vampire is awesome. And this episode is awesome. It's beautifully shot and wonderfully acted, actually, too. You've got one of my favorite, if not my absolute favorite character from the entire Stephen King's, not just the stand, the book, but even more so, the movie. Because that 1994 TV movie, which was just this massive miniseries, had a guy named Adam Stork in it. And he hasn't really done much else besides, like, Mystic Pizza with Julia Roberts or whatever. But he is so damn good as Larry Underwood when he's singing Eve of Destruction and that. And, oh, man, I just love his character so much. And that was actually a Mick Garris-directed miniseries, you know, based on the Stephen King just ginormous tomb. And Mick Garris is also another veteran of Tales from the Crypt. So... Yeah, man, I, I gotta say, this episode is, it's interesting for the sheer fact that you've got a lot of internalizing, you know? So Stork's character, he is, um, he's just like driving out to this home that he has inherited. His father has just recently passed and, you know, he's doing all of this internalizing about, you know, how frustrated he was with his father and just the way that Silverstein shoots it. There's like images overlaid over images. It's like, as he's driving to this property, He's looking out his windshield, and there's like other images like transposed onto the windshield, and there's just, it's just such a beautifully shot episode. And then he ends up getting to his property and realizing the place that's supposed to, you know, be uh, abandoned and burned down and stuff, all these kids are having a flipping party at it, and he's pissed, and it's totally nuts. So, yeah, I gotta say, the Fae almost definitely comes here in the twist, and um, something that our, our protagonist, well, I guess he's... Not even so much the protagonist, because that would entail that he's a good guy. He's flawed, you know? He's not the best of guys, and he makes a decision that kind of, um, well, it sets about the chain of events that gets way fail, man, I'm telling you. And the twist, you think it's going to go one fail, and then it ends up going another fail, and it's very intriguing, it's very cool. Stork's performance is killer. You also have kind of an amusing turn by the spawn of Gary Busey, Mr. Jake Busey, who is known for frightening performances in uh, the, what, the show Shasty McNasty. Or <laughs> he's pretty good in Starship Troopers, I guess. But yeah, man, it's, um, it's Feo in the finale, and I love it. It's, uh, it. it's a good episode, and it's got some great makeup work, and... Yeah, I gotta say, all three of these episodes, though, at the end of the day, guys, are all pretty damn good, and it was so tough to, you know, oh, they could have, honestly, all of these could have been either Bueno or Feo episodes, and I'm really sad that somebody had to fall on the grenade, and sadly, it had to become the Dawn, but I highly recommend all three of, those, of these episodes, Surprise Party, Comes the Dawn, and also the one that got the Bueno distinction today, which is Doctor of Horror, just because of the sheer fact that it's got that nostalgia for me, and... It's great that it's held up very well over the years because there's certain ones that I remembered loving that definitely did not. So, yeah, that's going to be the end of it for us today, guys. This was the 26th installment of my Tales from the Crypt coverage. I've only got a couple more episodes here in the sixth season to cover, and then the seventh and final will be coming at you, and then I'm also going to do a bonus episode of the three Tales from the Crypt films. So, in any event, I extend a grande gracias, horror fans. You can find me covering all things scary at the thehorrorshowchannel.com. We are also on YouTube and... Uh, hundreds and hundreds of episodes of coverage with not just me, but Cecil Laird, also Susie Von Slaughter, and Ms. Rainbow Rules, Marsha Parker. And you can always find me on social media talking about the hottest entertainment with an edge, Musica Cinema, at Jaime and Fuego, as you're seeing it spelled below, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. So until I see you for the 27th installment, as I near the finale of my Tales from the Crypt coverage, adios, sin amigos, and stay scared. It's an order, Fright fans.